All right guys, JDSP here. This is gonna be a quick video on how to fix HDR games, native HDR games. Um, the main issue with native HDR games outside of the default settings being almost always awful is that the black floor within native HDR games is almost always raised. Like I actually haven't found a game where it hasn't been artificially raised for no reason. Um, I'm gonna chalk this one up to incompetence because I can't see any other, other explanation for it. But luckily we can fix it. So uh, this is gonna be a kind of a step-by-step -step guide on how to fix it. First things first is to install Reshade and install the Prod80 shader pack of shaders within Reshade. And once you have the game open, you have injected Reshade. Um, the only plugin that I use is gonna be called the Prod80 03 Curved Levels plugin. All this does is effectively allow us to like adjust the levels of the image with curves as opposed to fixed values. Um, so we're going to reset everything here. We're going to move the window over so we can see elements that we think should be dark enough. So to prep yourself for doing this in every game, find somewhere that's really dark, find somewhere that's really dark and that the stuff that is as dark as it is that the game will allow you can't actually make out any detail. So for example, right in this little, uh, the top bit of this shelf, there's a box and behind it there's nothing, I think. I don't know, I can't tell. It's, but I can tell it's great. Another step is to make sure the environment you're doing this in is actually quite dark, because dialing in black level points when your room's really bright is not a great idea. Um, so we're gonna enable the curve level plugin. Um, I leave dithering on, uh, I haven't noticed a difference. Uh, with it being on or off, I just leave it on. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the preprocessor de definitions and we're going to enable the uh, graph so you can make out what's going on. This graph is pretty important so we can ensure that the aspects other than the shadows which we're adjusting remain the same. So first of all, the first bit is this gray black point. This effectively is where we're starting the clipping. So if we were to raise this value, you can just see how the entire image gets darker. This is not what we want, because we want to keep everything true to how it was beforehand, but just make the shadows darker. Hence, we have like this this neutral line in the middle, and then this like bolder line is the line we've we've currently like we're making adjustments to. So in order to make sure none of the high end gets tweaked, if you adjust the gray shoulder x and y positions to the max, and then back them off one click because if you have them at one and one, you have this like weird noise clipping for really, really bright elements. So just back them off by one. Sometimes you have to back one of them off by two and one of them off by 0 0.001, um, but usually both back them both off by one will do. And then where we play around with is just the toe X and Y positions, which is adjusts how we want to affect the uh, coming out of clipping to the rest of the tracking of the rest of the scene. So. This is more of a, there is no one click solution for every single game because every game has different black floor levels and every game doesn't always react the same on how you want it to come out of black. So for example, um, this toe X position really defines how harsh you want to come out of uh, being clipped. So if I were to put this really, 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 really low and then adjust the Y position so that we're kind of on top of the line that we were previously, and then you were to use, uh, there's a reshade button so you can toggle it on and off really, really quickly. You can see that, ignoring the, the graphing in the background, um, we are only adjusting the, the, the back elements of the game. If I turn it off, it's gray. If I turn it on, it's kind of black. The issue is because our transition is so harsh that it kind of looks a bit like there's banding in a sense. So up here, for example, like before it's just all gray, but it's like a nice roll off. However, because our transition is so harsh, you can kind of see this like line effect or outside this like on the top and bottom of the pipe where it goes from being gray to almost black. So it's not ideal. Um, so you just have to go in and adjust this value until you think, ah, this is clipping way too much. This is not clipping enough. I think for Cyberpunk, I settled on 23. And then you want to go off and adjust how smooth you want the roll off to be. Now this is purely personal preference. I don't want to adjust the image all too much from how it came out stock. I just want to make it sure so like stuff that was gray is now black. So I usually just play around with this. 
I don't like it having it don't like having the roll off too uh, too smooth because then we are adjusting too much of the low end of the image. So you just go through, play around. There is no science to this. The only thing, the only rule that you have to like abide by is to make sure that the graph, this graph, um, follows the the thin line behind it, um, and then you're fine. So keeping the gray point at 23, I think I had 23 before, maybe it was 22. Keeping the gray point the same, but just adjusting the toe X and Y values and how smooth we're rolling off. If you were to look at the same two pipes, so the pipe on top of us, there is no harsh gradient anymore. There is still now like a nice roll off from gray, from where the highlight is to the gray to almost black. And if you look at the pipe in the back, um, again, the roll off is there, the whole thing. Like, instead of it being black, and then a very stark transition between black, gray, and then the highlight, there is like a roll off between the, all of the colors. Another like, side effect of adjusting the black level is that the overall richness, the contrast, of course the contrast, but the overall richness of this entire scene is like almost dramatically changed. Uh, before and after, it's like an entirely different scene, honestly. Um, you can make out detail that's in between, the, behind this box. Before you couldn't, because it was just all gray. But now you can at least tell that there's like a difference between the black behind and the box and there's a little bit in between that you can't really make out um so this is how impactful adjusting the black floor or black level within video games can be especially in hdr however it's not like a perfect science so for cyberpunk i've already came to these numbers because i've spent like i don't know 10 15 minutes messing with values um but an issue you have sometimes in games is just finding the correct area um, if it's daylight you'll see like on this section of the wall when I look over here you will see a very slight difference so you, you definitely can't do it when it's outside you have to make sure that where you are in the game is dark enough you would think this would be dark but it's not so right right in between here you've got the the ambient light from this neon sign over here the blue spilling from behind and right underneath here you would think it's going to be kind of dark but not that dark if you compare the before to afterwards it's again a transformative difference you went from something suddenly everything's like covered in this gray mist to stuff is actually black however as i was saying before the the level of roll off is very very important if i were to put the toe x really really harsh and then make it so everything lines up on the graph you compare it before and after because we're adjusting a smaller range of values despite the clipping being the same we're only affecting literally from effectively zero to 25 effectively um only the, the the darkness underneath this tree underneath this grate is changed and if i was to find other areas where like you could maybe you find a more harsher transition between the the roll off because it's so s sharp right now um it's not the most straightforward way to explain it but you, you should understand that with this transition only the rusted parts of this, uh, I don't know, metal container is affected. Whereas if I were to back off the roll off and then they like, make it a lot more smoother, you suddenly feel like a lot of the entire scene right now is adjusted because it's dark. Um, again, it's a per game basis. It's how you prefer the look. Uh, there is no direct science. The only thing, as I said beforehand, is to make sure that the line matches up with the, the very thin line behind it. Now for some stuff at the end that I forgot to include. The settings that you get to within Reshade aren't directly affected by the in-game settings. It's just the fact that the in-game settings adjusts how, obviously, in-game it deals with uh, light levels. So if you've got perfectly, you think you come to a perfect like, bunch of values for Reshade for that specific in-game values, like brightness values, if you were to adjust this, it would internally adjust where the black floor or how it comes out of black in the game before reshade is applied. So if you want to do this as like a step-by-step -step guide for opening up a new game, is just to try to get your in-game values first, adjust dialed in, and then go after, after that, and then go into reshade and dial in the values that way. Another aspect of this that I didn't, that I forgot to mention is that some games like have eye, eye adaptation and some scenes are just really dark. Cyberpunk is an example of this where in some scenes it's really, really dark, like darker than most of the game is. And so having values that you've adjusted wherever you 
got the values from uh, might be too dark for this one scene. So as I said before my cyberpunk video, to have a hotkey that you can turn this reshade on or off. I wouldn't like toggle on and off too much unless you're like really bothered about dialing in the perfect value, which there isn't a perfect value because the game does its own thing, but having it there so you can at least disable it if stuff becomes too dark and too clipped. Uh, I think that should be everything for this um, tutorial guide. Any questions, leave them in the description. It should be good enough primer to understand how to uh, adjust stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it's been useful. See you a lot later.